Let's take a minute and review some basic factoring before we get into trinomial factoring, which is our most recent topic. In the very first problem that you see on the upper left, the first thing I notice when I look at this problem is that there's a lot of variables and a lot of numbers. And so it's my hope that maybe there's a GCF, a greatest common factor, that we can take out of all these terms. I see 9, 12, 6, and 15 are all divisible by 3. So if I'm looking at each of these terms, the 9xyz, the 12x cubed z, the negative 6x squared yz, and the 15x squared y, the first thing I'm going to note on each list is that they're divisible by 3. So 3 is going to be part of their GCF. The second thing that I look I notice when I look is that they all have an x in them. So an x is going to be part of their GCF. Um, the next variable I see is a y, but only some of the terms have a y. And the next variable I see is a z, and only some of the terms have a z. So that looks like it's the greatest common factor. And now we go back to each term and we say, okay, I need 9xyz and I've got 3x so far. So I'm going to need a 3 to get back to 9 a y, and a z. In the next one, I've got 3x, and I need to have 12x cubed z. So I'm going to need a 4, an x squared, and a z. I've got a 3x, and I need to get back to negative 6x squared yz. So I'm going to need a negative 2, another x, a y, and a z. I've got 3x, and I want to get back to 15x squared y. So I'm going to need a 5, an x, and a y. So this 3x that we pulled out of everything, that's my GCF. So I'm going to take the GCF of 3x and open a set of parentheses. And inside the parentheses, I'm going to have all those additional terms. 3yz plus 4x squared z minus 2xyz plus 5xy. And that Looks like it's the best I can do. The only other thing would be to check and see, can we group what's inside? So I'm going to try it. If I group the 3yz and the 4x squared z, the only thing I could take out of those would be a z, leaving a 3z plus 4x squared behind. I can see right away that there's no x squared in that last term. So I'm not going to be able to factor any further. So what I've put in the box is, in fact, the best we can do. Now, this next one, I notice again that they have a 3 in common. So let's take a 3 out of everything. And this is going to be one of those problems where we use the big bracket. So we're going to have 3x cubed um, minus 2x minus 15 Oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have changed that. x squared minus 15x plus 10. And then we can do the grouping, remembering that the negative sign goes with that term, and I need a plus sign in between. So I want you to push pause on this video, and I want you to try to factor the rest of the way based on what you remember from class. Once you've done the problem to the best of your ability, push play and see how I did it. Okay, so I hope you're comparing your work to mine now. I've already done the pulling out the GCF from each of the two binomials, and now I'm going to take and write that part out. There's my x squared from the first two binomials and the 3x minus 2 that's left behind. And then, oh, I'm just noticing a little error in my work. I should actually have a positive 3x there, because remember, whenever we have a negative here, we want to pull a negative out of each of those terms means that's going to have to be a negative 2. So I'm going to pull a negative 5 and leave a 3x minus 2 behind. So now we can see that this 3x minus 2 is the big GCF of the first half of the problem and the second half. So we have the 3 that was outside the bracket times the 3x minus 2 that they have in common times the x squared minus 5. That's the other binomial that they leave behind. All right. I want you to take a moment and do a little puzzle practice. Remember, we do the puzzle practice 
because this way of thinking is an important part of what we do when we factor. So push pause on the video, take a couple minutes, and try these puzzles. All right, my pairs of numbers are listed down the middle of the chart. Compare my work to yours, and hopefully you found all the pairs that I did. All right, our last thing for today is to practice factoring by splitting the middle term. I'm going to do one problem with you, and then you're going to try one problem on your own. So let's start with the very first problem. It says 2x squared plus 11x plus 12. All right, remember we have to create the puzzle to solve, right? That puzzle practice that we just did is the first thinking that we need to do in this problem. We're going to take the 2 and multiply it by the 12 to get 24. That's the number that we're saying, I need two numbers that multiply to make 24 and add to make the only other number in the trinomial. It's got to add to make 11. So when I look at this, 24 and 11, well, 6 times 4 is 24, but if I add them together, I get 10. So that's close, but not quite what we're looking for. So what else multiplies to make 24? Um, well, there's the 2 and the 12 that we used to get this in the first place. If I add those together, I get 14. That seems to be going the wrong way. That's actually too much. What else multiplies to make 24? Well, 3 times 8 multiplies to make 24, and if I add those, I get 11. So there's my pair of numbers, 3 and 8. So I'm going to use the 3 and the 8 to split the middle term. So remember, my first term stays the same. 24x squared. I split the middle term according to these two numbers. So instead of writing 11x, I'll write 3x plus 8x, which happens to equal 11x. And then my last term comes down. So we've actually done the step that's called splitting the middle term. So then I want you to take and do this problem the same way we did that problem in the upper right page of our note sheet today. We're going to group together, leaving the plus sign between, and then we're going to look for GCFs. So I've got 2x squared and 3x in the first parentheses. They only have an x in common. The top needs a 2x and the bottom needs a 3. So I need to factor out the GCF of x, leaving behind the 2x plus 3. Then I look at 8x and 12. Well, those are both divisible by 4. That's the biggest number that evenly divides both 8 and 12. The top needs a 2x and the bottom needs a 3. So I can factor out the GCF of a positive 4 and leave in parentheses the binomial 2x plus 3. Now, conveniently, 2x plus 3 is the same binomial in both the first half and the second half of the problem. So I can factor out that binomial GCF and multiply it by the x plus 4 to get my final factorization. All right, let's look at the last problem. Take a peek. Remember, your puzzle is going to be that you want to multiply to make 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6. And you want to add to make the remaining number. Now, that's tricky because all we see in the middle is an x. Remember, if you only see x, that means you really have one x. So you're looking for two numbers that multiply to make negative 6 and add to make 1. Push pause on the video and see if you can get through this problem. When you're done, go ahead and push play and you'll see my final answer. All right, comparing your work to mine, there's a couple of things that might be different in the way you did it. So first of all, I chose to write the 3x first and the negative 2x second. You might have chosen to write them in exactly the opposite order. In just a minute, I'm going to pop up the work in case you chose to do it that way. But let's assume for a minute you did it this way. There's another thing that sometimes catches kids by surprise, and that's the fact that if it looks like we factored everything out, there's actually still a 1 behind. So let's look over here. When we realized that they had a 3x in common, well, when we say, what do I need to multiply 3x by to get 3x? Your first instinct is to probably to say nothing, but really we say 1. 
So that term has something to sort of hold that place. We can't let that term disappear. And it's true that 3x times 1 is still 3x, so that is accurate math. That's usually the bit that sometimes students miss. I'm going to write out the work in case you happen to have reversed these two terms because that was perfectly okay. If you wrote negative 2x first and 3x second, you can still get the same answer, but your work does look a little different. So let me take a minute and write that out. Notice if you write it out the other way, you get exactly the same two binomials just written in the opposite order. It's perfectly fine to have it that way. That's the same answer, because remember, we're using the commutative property, we can multiply in either direction. All right, here's what you need to do to get credit for your work. You've done all these problems and you've checked your work. Take out your cell phone. Take a picture of this page. Take a good picture. Make sure I can actually read your work. Make sure the lights are turned on, you use your flash, etc. And line it up parallel to the paper, not on a funny angle. Then upload that work into the assignment in Google Classroom, and I will give you credit for all your work today. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.